The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets starting things off on the downside. You check out the S&Ps right now, negative action for most of the overnight session. You see a few different volatile moments in those S&Ps. You back things up to the close. We had some negative action at about 6.30. You back it up to 10.30 last night. You have S&Ps that trade from a price level of 44.67, down about 30 points to a low only within a half hour later of 44.36 you make it right back up to that same price point of 44.68 you trade down to a low of about 44.37 and we make it up to 44.65 and just like that at 8 in the morning the S&P is giving up 30 points over that time right now you're bouncing about 5 from the lows but you see the action basically sitting at pre-market session lows in the s and down about 2 thirds percent right now NASDAQ 100 pretty similar story in terms of a few different volatility points right near the lows of the pre-market session uh, you had the markets yesterday, 2 p.m. Eastern time, accelerating higher on Fed minutes. Uh, give it all back just like that across the board. You got the Dow right now, negative almost 190 points. You're down more than half a percent, 34,657. Bitcoin down and even $2,000 at 42,170. Crew contract, check out that acceleration in crude, man. From noon yesterday at almost 95 bucks, you trade to 89 last night six dollar move in the price of crude just like that right now you're trading down a dollar 43 in the session technically at 90 dollars and 41 cents gold contract catching a bid we just hit 1900 in gold folks check that out quite the run you accelerate lower yesterday gold trades up 50 dollars over the last two days sorry accelerates lower on tuesday we trade higher yesterday and we accelerate higher throughout the evening as well there's about 4 30 let's get into it there's yesterday's action there's the close of action yesterday we're up 21 dollars the price of crude silver not quite the same deal you're up 10 cents right now in the price of silver at 23.70 you got platinum up about 18 bucks you got palladium up 98 bucks there's some volatility for you palladium check out the longer term chart on that Still well off the highs of 3,000 bucks we got last year. Some of these commodities, man, down to 1,600 for palladium. Just like that, we're up at 2,300 right now. And we jump to the all-important notes and bonds right now. You are technically positive by 10 points on the session. We got a yield just under 2%. You're sitting at 1.996. That's the yield I have. We'll call it 2% on the dot. Uh, there's your weekly. Let's back it up even a little further. I've talked about it a couple times. Interesting point that we're sitting at here right at the 618. We're sitting at 126.05. I got a chart where you're talking about basically within a few ticks of the 618. And folks, that's the 618 on a weekly basis. Could probably put it on a monthly basis too because it's so long term. Going from October of 2018. I'm going to back it up even a little bit further so you can see where that begins. Okay, that is the start of the run to higher prices and lower yields. Okay, you get you trade from a price point of 117, let's call it for simple math, to 140. You're talking about 23 points to the upside, and we've now given up 14 points to the downside. That's a 618. Uh, we'll see if the trend continues or accelerates lower. You go lower, you're probably pushing 117.13 or that or thereabouts. Let's pull up the monthly for a little bit longer context, and you can see when I'm taking that point, that is a clear inflection point that that run started to higher prices and lower yields and just like that we're back to the 618 and yeah there's a couple points that you could choose on this chart in terms of where the 10-year could trade to for lower price but my eyes go straight to this 117 point you're talking about nine full points lower uh very reasonable with the conversations going on right now talking about the march meeting 25 basis points 50 basis points uh we all know the conversations are existing we got to wait for some more data and we got a little bit of data this morning jobless claims rise concentrated in a few states though you got missouri ohio and kentucky contributing most to the jump in claims economists expect them to ease as covid restrictions loosen we'll be talking to our man kevin hinks coming up after the break we talked to him every tuesday wednesday thursday at 9 15. he was talking about yesterday 
Uh, delayed data, delayed data, okay? But really just the transition that is taking place on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis right now, some states still getting hit hard by the Omicron wave, whether that's affecting people out of work, et cetera. Um, and with that, I'm getting a call from Australia. Who's calling me from Australia when I'm live on the air? I don't know. Maybe I'll leave a message if you are. Uh, getting into the numbers, applications for U.S. state unemployment insurance unexpectedly rose for the first time since mid-January. I've said it before, folks. I mean, you are in basically a healthy churn amount. Numbers rose by 23,000 to 248,000. There's your jump in claims. All things considered, uh, there's a little bit of volatility in these numbers, especially with what we're dealing with in terms of the Omicron wave and the economy right now. The market was looking for 218. You come in to 248, so it's a 30,000 rise. Folks, it's a 30,000 rise on a weekly basis when there's volatility involved. That's pretty much in line. Uh, rise in applications is likely a temporary blip after three straight weeks of declines as the labor market recovers. Uh, continuing claims for state benefits dropped to 1.59 million in the week ended February 5th. So that number out this morning, the market takes it pretty much in stride. Uh, housing starts though, this is quite a number, dropped 4.1% in the first decline in four months. New construction falls that 4.1% suggesting the impact from Omicron. Rise in building permits, backlogs, signals firmer construction. You got two different gists there. Uh, 1.64 million is the annualized rate according to the governmental data released this morning. Still applications to build rose to an annualized 1.9 million units, the highest since 2006 and you check it out mixed picture starts pulled back last month the rising permits point to firm activity ahead so check it out right you get the housing starts up top you get a little bit of a pullback here but you still got permits rising folks okay so a little bit of a lag to housing starts the permits are out there you can see how it wouldn't be that hard to happen folks it doesn't take many employees right whether you're in a construction crew whether you're in just a building firm, whatever you're doing, doesn't take many employees to be out for a few days for a week or so with a COVID scare, with a COVID case. Maybe your family has an outbreak like myself. I mean, we were, we were all basically hunkering down for a week, right? We were testing positive. We had a little mini outbreak in your family. I'm sure many people are dealing with it across the country. Uh, fiance's home. I'm home. Kids are home from work, right? We're just hanging out. Thankfully, everybody getting over it. We're pretty much back to normal. But in terms of work, man, if you're in a small business, folks, and you're just laid up and in the construction business, I was fortunate. I was from home. I could I could pretty much do my show. Uh, I think I missed two shows, uh, Thursday and Friday. I was back doing my show by Monday. I was still testing positive on Monday, folks. If I was in the construction business and I had to be on site doing construction and I was still coughing, testing positive, I couldn't be there. That work couldn't get done. If I had been there, maybe I'd infected a couple other people. I'm just trying to explain how there's so much volatility in some of the numbers we're facing, especially in that last Omicron wave. The numbers were just staggering in terms of the daily cases. <coughs> Still, uh, the country getting over it, but the daily cases, the impact on the economy, and you're seeing it on the impact in residential starts, dropping 4.1%. Meanwhile, we continued to see permits rising. Uh, housing market, man, on fire. Rental market, also on fire. Single family homes declining 5.6% in January, annualized pace 1.12 million. Uh, yeah, a little bit of volatility. We'll talk a little bit more about that. We got the S&Ps, negative 25. We'll be right back with our man, Kevin Hicks. Stay tuned, folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures, negative 26 points right now. You're talking about 6 tenths percent in the red. You get the NASDAQ 100 nearing about 8 tenths percent in the red right now, off 112 points, trading at 14,487. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, they break down the day's market action. They bring you some great guests. They talk about hypothetical trade setups. They're talking earnings. They're talking options, defined risk. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, we've got a little geopolitical risk back on the table this morning. As uh, right around 7 o'clock Chicago time, 8 o'clock Eastern, uh, the U.S. envoy to the U.N. says Russia is moving towards an imminent invasion of Ukraine. I think... Uh, all the troop pullback news that had the markets uh, feeling better the last couple of days has all been pretty much debunked. So I think we're back on geopolitical risk. And that what that does, Tommy, it narrows it down to you're not looking at the market by the day or the hour, but it's almost minutes now that, that, that changes the market. One will make a comment like just happened here. Maybe Russia will, will respond. It's going to be back and forth. This is the time to either don't pay attention to it at all or watch it any minute. Yeah, pretty remarkable. Even the overnight session, Kevin, I was kicking it off. Uh, we basically had a 30 to 35 point trading range and you did it three separate times, man. The last sell off taking place, like you said, at about eight in the morning, Eastern time, we we're up at 4465. Just like that, you give up 30 points over the 8 a.m. hour. We've bounced a bit. Um, and we've been talking this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's Thursday now. I was really surprised, man, that first day when you got such a huge reaction over basically Russian propaganda putting it out. And yes, there might have been pause, but we see it pull back. Uh, and I agree. It's going to persist, man. It's not going to end over. Uh, interesting to see how the market's going to digest. Probably a continuation of, of, of uh, the uncertainty, let's put it that way, at least, that's going on over there. We got weekly jobless claims this morning, Kevin. A little bit of a rise. Um, you know, you've talked many times, we're always getting new listeners out there, about the importance of this number or maybe the lack of importance, especially when you're pretty close. What's your take on the weekly jobless number and just the general number in terms of the importance of that number as we're 250,000 about right now? Yeah, every seven thir every Thursday at 8.30 Eastern time, we get jobless claims, which is the first-time filers for unemployment insurance. And last week was 223,000, a pretty good, strong number. This week, a little bump up to 248,000. Still 
it within a reasonable range for first-time filers for unemployment insurance. We, you know, we've had some good lows pre-pandemic, and then we had some spiked highs, as you can imagine, during the pandemic. So a return to normalcy in that number is um, is much appreciated by, by the overall markets. It's high-frequency data. It comes out every Thursday, and it's a number that can start, you know, you look for trends, that's for sure. So uh, it's certainly a number that, that, that we watch, but we don't worry too much about. So we got some companies with earnings out. Uh, Walmart out with their numbers, pretty decent numbers. They spike higher, they've pulled back a bit. You got NVIDIA out with their numbers last night. Uh, they're off about $7 right now. Palantir off with their numbers as well, down a decent $2 for a $13, $14 stock. Uh, we still got some earnings on the table, Kevin. What do you guys got coming up, talking at 12 o'clock today? Today we'll look at a name that has earnings before the open tomorrow, and that is the agricultural behemoth John Deere. And then we'll look at, uh, like Folio, we'll take a look at Roku. They have earnings after the bell today. And then DraftKings will cover in the third segment. That's perfect, man. John Deere, quite a run they had uh, yeah. from the pandemic of 106 to, to 400. You've been shopping around for about a year. And Roku, man, you talk about some pullbacks back to 161 from 490. And what was the third stock, Kevin? Uh, Draft I'm DraftKings. I was going to say, how did I forget? Because that one, same deal, man. Um, gambling in New York. We don't have gambling yet in Florida, Kevin, but I'm confident that our politicians are going to figure it out, man, because it's an exploding industry. There's too much money to be had, especially when I think these numbers start coming out for New York, et cetera. Uh, we just hit the Super Bowl, uh, but DraftKings, man, down to, down to 22 bucks from being at 74 bucks less than a year ago. Uh, before I let you go, Kevin, Fed minutes yesterday. We had some volatility, of course. Uh, do, do you have any take on what... what was showing in there? Yeah, I thought some of Jerome Powell's comments as they have, or the, the minutes released. Remember, uh, this is, by definition, stale data, right? It was the minutes from a meeting two weeks ago. But still, the market always reacts. And I think that Jerome Powell talking about they will act if they need to, I thought it was a very calming um, release of minutes from that meeting. And I think the market liked the overall tone of the Fed. They're on it, but they're not panicking. And I think they took a half point, they discounted the half point, and they discounted the emergency uh, rate hike. So those two are, I, I never say never, but the probabilities are lower for either one of those happening. Yeah, the market agreed, right? Trades from 44.30 up to almost 44.85. I find it so interesting, man. I mean, in my opinion, we got a two-way market. You can be short or long, depending on if you're, you know, maybe, like you said, you're either not watching some things or you're watching them every single minute, the way the market's right. moving. But we traded all up from 2 p.m. Eastern time. Kevin, yesterday, I know you know it, but I got the chart up here on the Thinkorswim platform. And we pulled back right basically to where we were at 2 o'clock yesterday uh, before we just got a bounce in the last few minutes or so. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation man we appreciate the education as always and we'll be watching fast market at 12 noon today all right tommy have a great day and a great weekend thanks for having you me too out. man you too take hey, kevin before late it's always amazing we talk to you every tuesday wednesday thursday man and it seems like the whole market changes sometimes from when i talk to you thursday <laughs> to tuesday so we'll see what happens man you have a great weekend as well you too tommy Thanks, man. Folks, tune in every day. Outstanding program. I know Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade, they are a sponsor, folks. I know I'm biased. I'd use them anyway, and I have learned so much from Mr. Kevin Hanks, the program that they do, Tom White, and just the education. There's no way to learn, folks, like actually doing something, like the hypothetical trades. They walk you through rolling those trades, trade management, right? Trades are going to go against you, folks. One of the toughest things about being in the probability business is accepting the fact that you are going to lose money, man. Man, there's going to be days that you're going to lose money. If you want to have days that you're making money, there's going to be days that you're losing money. It's just that simple. How do you manage those losses, right? How do you roll them forward? Trade management, et cetera. It's a great program. Check it out, 12 noon today. And they got a couple of great stocks, man. Roku and DraftKings. I mean, you're looking for bargains, folks. Um, you know, nothing to say these stocks can't go lower, but you were at pre-pandemic levels for Roku, which is pretty amazing. Not many people would have said, uh, Anytime 
well, maybe towards the end of last year, you might have said possibly, but you almost pushed $500 twice last year, folks, and you're almost at pre-pandemic levels. Uh, you're not, you are at pre-pandemic levels, which required you to trade under 176. Not many people, when this is pushing 500, thought it's possible. Uh, if this pandemic taught you anything, folks, never think you are smarter than the market. Never think that there's no way a stock can do something, okay? Because, boy, when you're dealing with multiples like you're dealing with in some of these companies, you better believe those multiples can get caught in an instant, uh, especially when you got rising rates. DraftKings, down to $17 from 74 last year, down to $17 from 64 just in September. Okay, now you're up to 23. That's quite a percentage bounce off 70, 17. Uh, and you could make the case. I'm going to put this on a daily. You could make the case that this is broken out of that trend line in terms of the downside. I'm just going to add a drawing, a simple trend line, something like that. Maybe that's a consolidation, though. Nonetheless, you're talking about DraftKings, company right now valued $9 billion. Not that bad when you think about the presence that they have and the possibility of online gambling. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P, negative 31 points to kick things off. NASDAQ 100, negative 119 right now. Pretty much right where we were pre-market. I got to try to Roku up here. So, man, Frank in the YouTube Tigers, Dan, he's saying, my dad would be looking for a sign of strength. A few volume spikes, but no wide price spread with them. And I'd agree, man. 
You know, I mean, that's there's there's no bid in this market right now, folks. You know, you look at this chart on a weekly basis. Can you find a bid? No, this thing's chopping around. Yes, that's Roku chopping around uh, near the lows in a big way. But boy, you talk about, you know, context is important, folks. You are almost in a losing position back to September of 2019 on these shares. Yes, you get some volatility, but if you're taking a longer term perspective on this, uh, yeah, I would not be scaling in my position Frank, if you're looking at it, I say, no, I would be scaling it. I would not just be loading up my position because, like you say, uh, there's nothing to say that we just don't go back to where this run started, which is the COVID lows, which would be amazing. But it's possible. Uh, I don't think that's likely, though, which is why at this price, maybe you start to scale into that equity on Roku. You could do the same thing with DraftKings, folks. Now, DraftKings, they're out with their numbers tomorrow or today? Tomorrow. Uh, a $2.90 move. So you got to think, if you're scaling in right now, right away, you're opening yourself up to a $3 move in either direction on their numbers. That's what's priced into this equity on their earnings tomorrow. Jumping back to the chart on DraftKings, I mean, you're down to $22.97, so a price of 64 Now, taking a look of, of some of what they're going to be looking at, okay? Um, just pulling up an article. We are briefly... Um, and this is talking about what DraftKings is looking for. So consensus estimate, revenue, $439.5 million. That would be a rise of 36.4% from a year ago. Earnings, they're going to lose some money, folks, 82 cents a share. Um, that's supposed to probably say in the last 90 days. We know it's pulled back. Um, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, folks, we love to gamble. And we got lots of disposable cash to gamble with, uh, unfortunately, for many people. But that's the case. These, this industry is going to explode if you have a longer term perspective. Um, getting in at basically IPO prices, you're talking about almost two years later for DraftKings. They're going to be a very profitable business at some point, folks. That may take some time. If you have a few year horizon, though, okay, they're going to be spending to grow. There's going to take. There's going to be an on ramp to legalized online gambling. It's going to take time. Florida just tried to get it done. Uh, it got overturned by a federal judge. They were trying to get it done quickly. We have a state constitution that they're going to have to deal with. It just got amended for an amendment that went up to vote. I think during the last election, 2020, maybe. Um, that said no more gambling to some degree unless it's voted on by the state. Now, of course, the lawyers are going to argue over whether that means a physical casino or online. All of this is going to play out. So there's going to be an on-ramp of states as they keep coming on. And what that's going to mean is that you're going to have a continued growth of these companies. On the good side, they're going to keep growing. On the bad side, they're going to have to keep spending money to grow as the states open up. But guess what? Once you get there, man... Sports are just going to be straight out gambling, folks. They already almost are. I mean, every ESPN, that's part of the reason that I'm a big fan of Disney. Because ESPN, in the age that gambling is about to take over sports, controlling sports is a huge factor. Now, ESPN is going to have to spend tons of money to keep that content, okay? But ESPN has a brand that's akin to sports, folks. You want to be gambling on the ESPN Sports app, right? News broke about that. I think in the last year or so, when Disney's stock just shot up, the Disney's basically thinking of just licensing their brand for a sports book as opposed to investing heavily themselves to build it. That might be the route. Just licensing the ESPN brand, okay, when gambling is just going to explode. Anyway, I've given you the case. DraftKings down about, what? Well, we'll call it flat. And you see it. The market's getting pummeled right now. <coughs> Excuse me. And you got DraftKings flat. Uh, so they're beating the market uh, by almost 1% today because you got the S&Ps right now down 36 points. That's 8 tenths percent. On a weekly basis, you know, you didn't break out of this weekly trend, folks, until January 17th. And really, you only had one week. One week is all we did. We broke out of that trend line. Now, we started trading lower from the beginning of January, right? But if you look at this on a weekly basis on the S&P futures, on a weekly basis, you break out of that channel line on January 17th. And all we've done is chop around at about 4,400, give or take. Yeah, we traded up to a high of 4,586. You traded down to a low of 4,212. We got some volatility. Um, but boy, you talk about pullbacks possible, folks. We're not even close to there if you think we have some severe pullbacks going on. I don't imagine that's going to happen. You're seeing companies keep up with inflation. Let's jump over to Walmart. There you go. Walmart, of all companies keeping up with inflation, you get 
catch a pop on the bid. We're up 1.8% right now on Walmart. You take a look at the weekly. I would like to see Walmart get above this support line that it's had going back to basically June of 2020. You can see we bounced off there once, twice, chopped around three times. And then as the market traded lower in January, you got below that channel line. You're up 2% today on their numbers. Now jumping around to Walmart numbers. Topped earnings expectations and reiterated its long-term forecast, which calls for adjusted earnings per share growth in the mid-single digits. Uh, yeah, Walmart has struggled over the last 12 months, not keeping up with the market. I think they got a $10 billion share buyback in here as well. Earnings per share, buck fifty-three versus a dollar fifty. Revenue, it's a decent beat, man, by what one point three four billion dollar beat. 152.87 billion versus 151. Now, Walmart's tight on the margins, okay? As in, they're the discount retailer of greatest value, okay? So they're making very little on the revenue they're doing. But folks, you have a company that's valued at under $400 billion and you're doing $152 billion of revenue a year. I heard on the Fast Market program yesterday, I watch it as a listener, folks. I tell you to watch it. I watch it myself to learn things. Uh, they had a statistic on there, and it makes sense, that 90% of Americans, excuse me, live within 10 miles of a Walmart. I, I do. I do. I, 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 it's probably a true statistic when you think about where people reside and how many Walmarts there are across the country. That is a startling statistic when you think about that and the reach they have and the reach they have for consumers uh, for Walmart. Now, we have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. I'm biased. The reason why I have it, though, is because of the reasons I'm talking about, folks. Now, same store sales. They come in at under above 5%, 5.6%. Look at these numbers. Throughout the entire pandemic, you are growing versus huge comps. 2021, same store sales were up 8.6%. 2022 are up 5.6%. Folks, that's compounded, okay? You gotta grow the sales at 8.6, and then you gotta grow the grow sale, the grown, grown sales at 5.6 on top of that. I mean, if you're doing 108,000, uh, excuse me, if you're doing $100,000 in sales in Q4, all right, that would mean if you rose 8.6, you'd be at about 108,000. Well, then you got to go up another 5.6% on 108,000. Now, it's going to be slightly marginal, okay? But let me look at it. And let me pull that up. Because it's, it, you know, when you have same store sales growing year after year on these types of levels, they are huge numbers, man. Um, so we were at basically saying, what is 8.6 plus 5.6 compounded? You're at least dealing with. 14.2%. So you got to go from 100,000 in sales to about 115,000 in sales. So over two years, Walmart has increased their same store sales by 15%. That's a staggering, staggering number when you think about the business that they do. To grow same store sales, which are reaching the same people by 15%. But guess what? Part of that, inflation. We're up 7% in the last year alone. But Walmart, they're keeping with. Uh, able to pass off some of those costs to their consumers up 1.5%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after the short break. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got to the market right now. You're looking at the S&Ps. Let me pull it up. Negative by 35 points right now, trading at 44.34. And we are right near the session lows right now in terms of where you were pre-market. Actually made it just a few points lower to about 44.31. NASDAQ 100, negative 120 points. Going to jump over to Airbnb right now. Uh, this stock, folks, put it on your radar if you're looking for some travel stocks, man. Tuesday, they come out with their earnings. Trade up to 194, you give it up on the open yesterday, you accelerate higher, you give it up pre-market yesterday again, and this thing accelerates higher as we have the market deteriorating, folks. Now, you took a look at Airbnb on a daily basis. You deal with a couple possible areas that you could draw this trend line, all right? Now, first of all, you're looking at some serious volume here, okay? On a daily basis, yesterday, you did 22.2 million shares. We only got a couple bars on this chart where we did that. You did 24. Okay, that was on the date of December 17th. And we also, you gotta go back to their last earnings when you did 27 million. All right, so there's some volume accelerating out, like our man Frank is saying in the YouTube Tiger stand. You got volume, you got some wide price spread here, ratcheting up to higher prices. We'll see how today goes in terms of the volume. We're only 13 minutes in the trading day. Uh, but you take a look at this on a little bit of a longer term basis. All right, got ahead of itself a couple times. Their last earnings were super strong, but this thing really got pummeled during the Omicron flare up, etc. in terms of travel, we basically had to recalibrate our expectations for breaking out, especially over a period of about one to two months. Travel stocks got pummeled. If you remember, we left for Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Omicron somehow became common knowledge by Friday when the markets opened for a half day. It sold off, continued to sell off the next week. That was the beginning of Omicron. Then we accelerated higher. Then we come into the new year and markets accelerate lower on rate concerns. Okay, Airbnb got punished on both of them. This thing started trading lower November 15th, really accelerated the week of November 22nd. November 29th, you kept going lower as well. We got a slight reprieve, and then things escalated to the downside. Point being, there's nothing to say that this stock can't be above where you were trading at on their last earnings season, okay, when they beat in a big way. They do it again. You're up to 188.76. You're up 1.1%, folks, on a day when the market is getting pummeled right now. But there's a lot of travel stocks out there. I happen to like this one. It makes sense fundamentally, folks. Airbnb, everybody's ready to break out, take some travel, go on a vacation. Uh, you know, hotel's probably going to be okay as well. But Airbnb, you're getting together with a lot of people. Maybe you're going with your family. 
they're a great company. Uh, they are dealing with some multiples, so you you know you risk you open yourself up to some volatility, as this chart should illustrate. But this thing's accelerating higher on a day that you got some bad market action going on. So pay attention to that when this thing opens at 184 and the market says no, we're going to trade it up five dollars just like that. And that's at a time that we have the S and P's right now trading lower. Uh, Expedia, another great company right now, but you're still down 1.7 percent. So maybe Airbnb still digesting some of the earnings because this company is basically pushing all time highs. Expedia up at 210. Uh, only, was that yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Makes an all-time high of 217. They were also out with their earnings. I believe that's uh, last week or so. Expedia out with their numbers. Uh, let's jump to some of the airlines, see how they're trading. You got Delta down about 1%, but these stocks coming off some lows. Delta just traded up more than 8 bucks from where you were January 24th. Let's jump domestically to see where we're at. JetBlue uh, down about 9 tenths percent right now. We jump to Southwest shares down about 1% right now. Boeing is where you could get some exposure as well. Boeing, jumping from 183. Now, Boeing, if you're looking at Boeing, you're coming into kind of the upper boundary of a possible channel line here. You go back to where we were a year ago. I have a daily chart up here. All right, now I'm going to show you two channel lines, okay? This big one, obviously it broke out of, okay? This is going back to the COVID lows. And you can see it was kind of a nice channel line. You bounce on the lower part. You have the top parts lining up, parallel lines to the top to the bottom. We trade to the bottom line. We bounce once, and then you trade through it. Now, as our man Bud Rolfs used to say, you trade through the channel line. You want to see it come back and test the channel line. And that's where you make the trade that it breaks lower. And that's what happened here on Boeing, right? You skip across that channel line. That channel line, you were at 236 back in November. And you trade all the way down to 185. You trade down to a price of 183 earlier this year. Now focusing, I'm going to take these channel lines off, okay? So we can just see the more recent channel line. That's a weekly. Let's put it back to a daily. Because I imagine Boeing has some upside potential as the travel uh, breakout takes over. Okay, but you're nearing an area of resistance. So look for that channel line. Let's extend it to the right. Let's grab that. Extend that drawing to the right, all the way across. And again, you know, this is not an exact science, folks, all right? I think that channel line lines up pretty well, but you could also make the case that maybe it lines up a little bit lower for a little linear regression. You could even make the case that maybe it's lined up there. You can see we are nearing the top portion of that. And you better be aware of that. When you trade from 187, okay, what is that? 20 days ago, 20 days ago, over that time, Boeing is up $33.00. And $33, you're pushing, what, 17%? So Boeing is up 17% in the last 20 days. I shouldn't have to tell you that you're nearing an area of possible resistance just by those types of bounces. And look how many times it's hit the top portion and then hit the bottom. So pay attention, Boeing, 220. You may face some resistance. We may be right there right now. Uh, if you're trading short term, I think about taking some profits. You're looking to scalp, maybe for a short term short. You could look there, Boeing, down 1% right now. We get the S&Ps down 1% right now as the market's deteriorating a bit. S&Ps, you're making session lows right now, 44.26. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar action, session lows. Look at this drop that we just got. This is a 15-minute bars, but it's only been open for three minutes, folks. And you just had the NASDAQ 100 drop 60 points over that time. The Dow now down over 300. The Dow now below anywhere we were yesterday, making lows. And you got the Russell down more than a percent right now as well. Bitcoin down $2,000 right now at 42,080. Commodity-wise, we got crude, little volatility in both directions, man. Crude, these, these moves don't look so big because of the moves we've had in terms of going from 95 to 89. But folks, in any other universe, crude trades down $2 from 8 in the morning, bounces a buck 40 from 925. Crude is very volatile, to put it lightly. And we jump to gold. Gold, holding on to the gains right now. We're up 24 bucks. You reach 1900 in that gold contract. You back things up. We haven't seen 1900 since when? June of last year. So we break above the recent highs that we had in November. You reach 1900 on the dot. We're sitting in 1896. Uh, the last high from June, 1919, that we'd be talking about there. And let's check in on notes and bonds as we're getting a little bit of a reprieve right now. You got the 10 year catching a bid in terms of a reprieve with lower yields. You got a yield of 1.97%, just like that. Yields decreasing. Really interesting the divergence. Uh, since maybe not divergence, just the battle going on between geopolitical risks affecting yields and the Fed risk affecting yields.
Sometimes the market's pulling back because yields are rising. Other times the markets are pulling back and yields are decreasing. There's a lot of forces in play right now. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're trading right now. Amazon catching a bid. Check that out. Maybe that has to do with Walmart. Uh, Amazon up half a percent right now. You jump to Microsoft shares down 1.3%. Google shares down a percent. News breaks yesterday. Google going to institute the similar policies to Apple for privacy. Not what Facebook wanted to hear, but maybe that's another buying opportunity, man. Facebook, you're flat today with the market getting pummeled. How about that pop on the open? Uh, at some point, folks, I imagine you get to multiples that people are going to say, hey, I got to at least put some money in play here. Doesn't mean that I'm going to make it, but boy, you're trading at 216 right now and you are almost back. Same deal to pre-pandemic levels on Facebook. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show in three minutes. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets accelerating to the downside. NASDAQ 100, you're off 1.45% right now, 210 points in the red. All the markets drop, and you get the S&Ps down 1.3%. Dow's off 1.2%, and the Russell off 1.3% as well. We're going to finish it off with Tesla. We jump over to Tesla shares. You're down about 1.7% with the market. You're trading at $907. You put this thing on a weekly. You look at the run that Tesla has had since August of last year, and you're chopping right in around at that eight, uh, seven, 618 
retracement. That's a nice price point I like. Uh, like to set my stop maybe on the other side of that, depending on how you're trading. At least you have an area that you're making a trade. Whether your conviction is right or not, you have a plan and you can stick to it. Sometimes my plan is depending on volume, depending on pullbacks, depending on what's going on. Now, Tesla's got some volume, man. They got some volume. You spike lower on January 24th on a weekly basis, 208 million shares. Now, the reason why I talk about Tesla as well, I pull up the uh, headlines. Mr. Elon Musk always in the headlines and Listen, this guy is brilliant, folks. This company, uh, you could probably buy Tesla at 900 bucks right now, and in the long term, you'd make some good money, okay? Because he's a brilliant man. He changed the world in terms of bringing electric vehicles forward at a faster pace than any of the automakers were willing to do so. Uh, but boy, the, the, the battle that he is having here with the SEC, the reason why the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, exists is because of people like Elon Musk, folks, okay? You can't have the richest person in the world out there saying whatever he wants online, okay, that affects shareholders, okay? There is no free speech involved when you go to the public and raise money and take their money to buy your shares on a publicly traded corporation, okay? That's the difference. If Elon Musk had a company that was private, of course he can tweet out, Taking Tesla private at 420, considering funding secured. That's the important part, okay? If you want to go to the public and raise money for your corporation, you need to be truthful with them, all right? Richest man in the world out there doesn't think anybody can tell him what to do. And unfortunately, that is the reason why they exist. It has nothing to do with free speech, folks. He's just not allowed to exaggerate and lie because if you could, the markets would deteriorate. It would all become hyperbole and nothing would matter. So keep that in mind when he talks about free speech. He's got plenty of free speech, man. He might have more free speech than anybody. Thanks so much, folks. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. Live programming all day. Have a great Thursday.